Hello everyone and welcome to the last fireside chat of the Zero Project Conference 2024. I have the pleasure of being here with Dom Hayans from Purple Goat. And I have to ask, who are the Purple Goat? Tell us about you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, firstly, lovely to be here. Um, so Purple Goat are the world's first and only disability-led inclusive marketing agency. Um, so what makes us different is that we are an agency looking to create the most forward-thinking, progressive, authentic uh, marketing campaigns out there and utilizing the lived experience um, of disability within our team and also those that we activate on social media and beyond into film, insights, consultancy, TV, and, and everything in between. Um, purple is the color of disability in the UK and much of the world now, and GOAT um, is the name of our sister agency, uh, but stands for greatest of all time. So that's why Purple GOAT. Okay, so that sounds really amazing and exciting. So you are exactly rebranding how we should think about inclusive marketing. If you are disability led, I guess you are staying away from stereotypes, right? Exactly. I think all too often we see two distinct depictions of disability in our media. We see triumph over adversity, maybe even people being portrayed as the pinnacle of success being a Paralympian. Um, but obviously we're Dom, a diverse... I'm so yes. sorry to right now interrupt you, but we are having some technical difficulties. Can you wait one second for us to come back? No problem. Yes, so please just wait one more second and I will just see what is the difficulty that we are having. Okay, no problem. Okay, so there was some problem with the stream. I hope that it will be uploaded soon enough. So let's just keep talking. So you no were worries. saying? Yes, yeah, so all too often we see two distinct depictions of disability in the media. We see triumph over adversity, where disabled individuals have to overcome something or want to achieve uh, something other than what they are. Um, for example, the pinnacle of the achievement being being a Paralympian. Um, on the other side, we see pity around disability. We see disabled individuals as being othered and lesser. We very you know, often do not see people as people that just happen to be disabled with their intersectionality uh, being sort of very diverse and promoting like all aspects of what makes them them, not just the angle in and around disability. So the reality of what just makes us all who we are, where disability is just one part of that. And for us, that's where we like to, to live in the in the nuance, in the difference, in the um, you know, diverse lived experiences that we all have and not conforming to the stereotypes of what people expect disabled to think or feel, but actually speaking with the community themselves and letting them express themselves and their thoughts and their opinions in the way that's right for them. So tell me a little bit how you are, you know, working with the brands. They approach you, they are telling you, oh, we have this great idea for a campaign and they are just throwing stereotypes at you. And what do you do then? How do you talk to them? It, it actually happens in a number of ways. Um, sometimes a brand absolutely comes to us and they say, we've got this idea, can you, you know, make sure that it's authentic to the community that we're talking to? Um, and hopefully they've asked us quite early in the process because then we can help shape the idea with them right from the start. It, to your point, sometimes you have a situation where you come in quite late to the, to the sort of planning 
And they've already created this idea that, you know, sits where a lot of stereotypes might be around disability. For, for example, we try not to use the word like inspirational in a lot of our campaigns. But it might be that a creative director at an agency that's come up with this brilliant campaign has put the word inspirational in the front and center of the campaign. And so then we have to kind of consult and explain why we would change that and kind of explain why the community thinks a certain way. You know, and another example is thinking about the social model of disability and using language around disability that's you know more appropriate to the intended audience um and and so again that's kind of something that we just naturally weave into our communications i would say that we also sometimes you know approach brands with um you know if we see that they've got a campaign that actually they might not know is an amazing opportunity to engage with the disabled population or in fact if we see that maybe they're not representing disability and inclusivity in a very authentic way, we actually can support them and we come to them and say, you know, this is a real great opportunity to A, think about your disabled customers as customers, uh, but B, to actually show the true diversity of the population, society in your communications. And we can authentically do that as, as Purple Go. Yes, you are right. Right now, I'm struggling to think about an uh, ad that featured a disabled person. I I'm really struggling to think about it. But maybe you can share some examples of your work or companies that you work with that you are, you know, they are the shining examples of how you do it. Yeah, yeah, of course. And to your point, uh, only around 0.9% of adverts feature disabled people, but roughly 24% of the population is is disabled. So there's a huge disparity of what we see. If we also look to kind of digital ads on social media, that number goes even lower, way beyond, you know, way below 1%. Um, in terms of the brands that are doing it well, luckily there are some. Um, so that's great news. Um, you might have seen uh, Apple's advert called The Greatest that shows how, you know, accessible technology isn't just good for disabled people, but it can be great for everyone. Like baking in inclusive practices can benefit society. And that's how we should be thinking about things, making things inclusive by design. Uh, we've also worked with, you know, numerous big brands, um, including in the UK, like Heineken. Um, so we've been doing a lot of campaigns where we're crafting a campaign um, that obviously talks to everyone's love of socializing, going out, doing things, but then also it's part of just a, a wider activation where we're supporting them across their events that they do, um, on their TV commercials, making sure that we're training their staff around best practice on social media, um, doing surveys and insights with the community, uh, helping them with their actual web experience for for their customers. So it's not just that we do a kind of activation in a, on a TV commercial or on social media, but actually we can support brands holistically uh, to be more inclusive than what they do. Um, there's lots of other examples. We've, we've had some good campaigns from uh, in the UK. Tesco, uh, Unilever, um, Rexona is the, the global kind of brand for deodorant. We've done some really nice work with them. And there's also products that naturally suit certain communities. So we know Audible um, is a really, uh, you know, accessible and also kind of a good tool for a lot of people in terms of engaging with, with audio content. And so we've done a really natural campaign that just talks to the natural inclusivity of that campaign. And, and that's always where we try and live in this area of authenticity, because that's so fundamentally important in the campaigns that we want to do. You are talking about both social media and keeping things authentic. Do you think that influencer marketing is somehow making the change for brands? I, I really do. I think that by leaning in on creators that can talk to their own lived experience, you are therefore empowering them to talk about a subject or talk about a brief 
in a way that's right for them as an individual. It's not trying to craft words on behalf of the community. It's allowing the community themselves to express how they feel about something and, and add that nuance, add that kind of additional thinking that you might not get in a traditional print ad or or commercial. So for us, it's, it's activating a diversity of creators has been truly fantastic. And we get really creative, progressive content and we can kind of showcase different people's lives, lived experiences and open, you know, the rest of the population's eyes up to to the you know opportunities in and around kind of engaging with inclusion as well. Okay, so I have one more question because we are knowing that there are so many business oriented people here. How can we reach you? Do you have a website, a link, a email address that you can drop right now? Yeah, absolutely. So our, our agency's name is Purple Goat. Um, so our website is purplegoatagency.com. Uh, my name is Dom Hyams. So you can also find me at, at Dom Hyams on most social uh, platforms. And then finally, Dom at purplegoatagency.com if you want to send me an email directly. The one thing I would say is we are a very safe space. So if anyone wants to engage with inclusion, engage with disability, for us, there are no wrong answers. So we're really open to hand-holding brands, hand-holding organisations through the experience of working in and around disability and, and progressing our work over time. And the last question for you. There must be one client that is like the perfect person or the perfect brand that you really want to work with. Does anybody comes to your mind right now that you would like to say, yeah, we would love to work with them and create something extraordinary? Um, we, are, we are lucky enough that we genuinely are working with some of the biggest brands in the world. Um, and for a company that was founded in 2020, it's sometimes it's kind of been a pinch me moment of, wow, you know, the, the, the work we're doing on a global level is fantastic. I would say when I referenced Apple, um, I saw that that film, that advert called The Greatest, and I genuinely thought, I wish I'd made that. And so I can safely say that probably they would be the client that um, we'd love to be doing more work with. Um, I think the world of opportunity, now we are moving into a world of, you know, AR, VR, and, and opening up opportunity and independence to people. and ensuring that stays inclusive and stays accessible at the same time. I think there's such an amazing opportunity there um, to tell really kind of interesting stories. So that would be my answer, I think, to you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge, for telling us so many inspiring stories of how to drive inclusive marketing and making it a reality. Thank you so much for joining us for this Fireside Show. And I hope I will see you at ZeroCon next year. Absolutely. Thanks so much. I look forward to chatting more soon. We have no idea what happened, but the video with our Fireside will be online soon. So no worries about that. Way. <laughs> no worries at all. Yes, yeah, so thank you, Dam, yeah. and really see you next year. Yeah, thanks so much. I really hope so. Speak bye -bye. soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.